Hi everyone. So this will be the first of our pre-lecture videos. I will go through some basics and ask you to review these concepts prior to our live lecture courses. So I'm hoping that you get sort of the basics understanding, the easy stuff under your belt before we, we can do examples and sort of clicker questions on the trickier stuff during lectures. So this is going to be um, on what I call lecture L2 about ideal gas processes. Let's get started with this. All right, so previously, I'm hoping that you remember um, the discussion of pressure, volume, temperature, what they mean. These are state variables, properties of a, uh, an equilibrium state of, for example, an ideal gas in a container. And then uh, hopefully you're also familiar with the ideal gas equation of state, PV equals NMRT, NM is the number of moles. You can also write this as PV equals NKBT, where N is the number of molecules or particles, or in terms of the specific volume, which is the volume per mole, the small v is volume per mole, you could write PV equals RT. All right, so um, mostly we're interested in, you know, containers of gas, for example, this container, imagine it's full of gas, and then it comes to equilibrium, so it has a pressure and a volume and a temperature. And of course, it would be kind of boring if we just let it sit there. I mean, it would come to some equilibrium, but then you know nothing would happen, and then the course would be extremely boring. So we want to talk about how do we go from some equilibrium state to another equilibrium state. So I want to take my uh, gas, I want to do something to it, and then I'm going to end up in some other state, which is in equilibrium as well, right? So I'm changing, bringing this gas from one state to another. This is called a ideal gas process or a thermodynamic process. I start from some initial state, end up in some final state. Okay, so we wanna start thinking about how to represent this graphically. I think the diagrams are, are very helpful for understanding how to represent this. So I'm gonna represent thermodynamic states of an ideal gas in this kind of diagram, which we call a PV diagram. And it's called that because we usually put on this axis V and on this axis P. So the y-axis is pressure, the x-axis is volume. You know, sometimes you could write it as the specific volume, the small v. Either way, we're just doing qualitative um, discussions today, so either way is okay. So every equilibrium state, for example, this one that I'm drawing here, is represented as a point on this diagram. So let's call this uh, uh, the point A, and it's got some volume A, and some pressure PA, okay? So if the gas is in this state, it has some pressure and some volume, and it also has a temperature TA, right? Now, I don't, have to dr I don't need three axes here for PA, VA, and TA because I always know that they, it obeys the equation of state, right? PV equals NMRT. So if I know the pressure and the volume, I also can determine the temperature, right? So I don't need to plot TA here. Temperature does not need to be plotted uh, because it's implied, right? Implied by the ideal gas law, the ideal gas equation of state. Okay, so if I know the pressure and the volume and the number of moles, I can determine the temperature. Okay. So let's imagine I start in this state which is my initial state. I'm gonna call it I for my initial equilibrium state. And then I'm gonna do something to the gas and I'm gonna find later it's in some other state up here. So this will be my final state with a different volume, obviously, Vb, a different pressure, okay? Okay, so started my initial state, ended up in my final state. And the way that I get from one to the other I uh, will usually draw with a line in this diagram, for example, something like this, okay? And that process, when I go from my initial state to my final state, is, is exactly what we're discussing in this lecture, calling an ideal gas process or thermodynamic process. So the, the green line represents the process of the gas going from state A to state B, the initial state to the final state. 
okay? Now there's many processes that are possible. In fact, there's an infinite number. Like I, I, I can go one way or another through this plane, right? So I could do something like this would be a different process, okay? So um, the arrow or the path that I draw from the initial state to the final state um, determines the process in which I went from my initial state to my final state. Of course, both of those paths start in my initial state I, my end in my final state F, but there, different things are happening along the way. So you could call this, you know, process one. Let's just call it process one. This would be a different process here. So there's many different ways to like manipulate the gas from some initial state to some final state. We represent that with these green lines on this diagram. So what do these lines actually mean? The way you should think of them, and I mentioned this in our earlier lectures, is that we're always interested in being like in equilibrium or near equilibrium. Thermodynamics, I'm always very, very close to equilibrium. So everything is happening very slowly. So in this class, um, we're going to be interested in what we call quasi-static processes. So that's something that happens extremely slowly. The gas is always very near equilibrium. I'm making very gradual changes, okay? And so I'll make a small change and then I'll wait for it to relax into equilibrium and then another small change and another small change and another small change. So incrementally I go from the initial state to the final state by doing something very slowly, step by step, okay? And so when I draw this like green line on this diagram, what you should imagine is that it passes through a bunch of equilibrium states on the way, okay? So I'm gonna draw a bunch of other dots in here to describe what's happening to the gas as it goes along there, right? So I start in my initial state, I'll do something to it, and then it'll be in that next equilibrium state. And then I'll do something to it, and it'll be in the next equilibrium state, and so on. Okay, so you should imagine you can do this really, really, really slowly, so that it's always near equilibrium, no changes are really big, and then I end up in my final state, okay? So quasi-static means, you know, static means nothing is changing. Quasi-static means it's like things are changing, but like so slowly that you can hardly notice them, all right? So in this class, there's no drastic changes, or there might be, but we're not going to come to them until much later, okay? So for now, we're going to be thinking about how do I make these changes really, really slowly? The gas is always near equilibrium, and that's what these, these lines mean on this diagram. So these lines that I drew there are sort of general processes connecting the initial and the final state, and I want to talk about some specific processes. So special uh, processes, which are kind of easy to handle. There's a few of them. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is called isobaric. Okay, iso means stays the same. Bar hopefully reminds you of pressure, right? Because uh, barometric pressure. So this is a process which happens at constant pressure. Isochoric, a little bit harder. This is some, a, a process which happens at constant volume. There's two other special processes which we will discuss at length. Isothermal, that one you can probably guess, constant temperature. And now the confusing one is called adiabatic. The question is, what is constant? I mean, we've sort of already done constant pressure, constant vol volume, constant temperature. In this case, nothing is constant, but this special process is one in which no heat is added. Uh, 
Okay, so already you're a bit confused. These are different, okay? And it's very um, confusing the first time you see it. You think that if you don't add any heat, the temperature will stay the same. That's not true, and we will go through this in detail. But for now, I just want you to recognize that there are two different processes. One, which is isothermal, means constant temperature. One, where no heat is added, okay? So what I want to do to introduce um, these concepts is to go through, to help you visualize some of these. So imagine an actual container of gas. Can you visualize what's happening to the system if you're going to go through one of these processes? So as an example, let's do the simplest one, which is going to be isochoric. So I need to take my system and I want to change it or change its equilibrium state, but keep the volume constant. And that's fairly straightforward to do. So right here, we've got a container of gas, and so it's in some initial state. And how can I change its equilibrium state? I can't change the volume, so the volume is fixed, right? So it's a fixed container. It can't expand or contract. So what I can do is I can add some heat to it by putting it on, say, a stove. Okay. But I'm going to do it again very slowly, so I don't want this to happen very quickly. right? I'm going to add some heat to it, but I want to do it very slowly. So I'm imagining putting it on a stove, and then I'm just cranking up the temperature a little bit at a time, one degree at a time. So I crank up the temperature one degree and then wait, crank up the temperature one degree and wait. So I'm adding the heat a little bit at a time. So increase the temperature of the stove one degree, actually much less than one degree at a time, let's say. All right, the temperature of the gas will be increasing. Very slowly, the volume is staying the same, and that means the pressure is gonna go up. So what does this process look like on a PV diagram? So here again, we'll draw V, and this will be P, and let's say we start at some initial state here. Let's call this PI. The volume stays the same, so the volume is always going to be on this line. And then after a while, it will come to some final volume here. So this will be PF. So my isochoric process looks like this. It's just a straight line upwards like that, okay? from my initial state to my final state. And that is accomplished by putting it on a stove and increasing the heating up the stove a little bit at a time. Okay. Let's think about the second one, which is isobaric process. How can I keep the pressure constant in my container of gas? Imagine you have some system like this so you have um, a container of gas, but it can expand and contract. So this is a movable piston. So imagine it's airtight, but this thing can move up and down. Okay. Another example of this would be like a balloon, right? The balloon can expand and contract in response to you know, what's going on outside. So in this situation, the pressure of the gas in equilibrium is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to this mass. Let's say you've got some mass on top of that piston there, or maybe the piston itself weighs something. So in equilibrium,
In equilibrium, the pressure, the uh, piston is not moving, so the gas pressure must balance the downward um, pressure from the atmospheric pressure and the mass. So I'm going to have my gas pressure inside will be equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is pushing downward on that piston, plus the pressure due to that weight, which will be mg divided by a, and a is the area of this um, piston. Okay, so. As long as I keep the mass on there constant and atmospheric pressure doesn't change, if I'm in equilibrium, the pressure inside the gas is going to stay constant, which is going to be equal to atmospheric pr pressure plus mg over A. Okay. Now how can I change this? Suppose it's in equilibrium. Again, put it on a stove, heat it up. Okay. So I'm going to add heat to it, again, in the same way as above. So increase the temperature of the stove, let's say one degree Celsius at a time, or even less than one degree Celsius, it has to be really, really slowly. Okay? So as I add heat to this um, gas, the temperature is going to go up. But as the temperature goes up, um, the pressure would suddenly go up, but then that would cause the piston to move up. So this, uh, as heat is added, this piston will go upwards, right? And it will move in, res in order to keep the pressure outside equal to the pressure inside. So what's going to happen? On a PV diagram, what does that look like? So this is V, this is P starting at some initial state here, so we'll call it VA, PA, and then heating the gas up a little bit at a time. Eventually it's going to come to a higher volume. Let's call it VB, but the pressure will stay the same, right? Because the piston will move in response to any change in pressure, so the piston will move in such a way so that the pressure inside is always equal to the pressure outside, which doesn't change. So in that case, my process would look like this. Okay. Constant pressure, the pressure doesn't change, volume changes. Isochoric, on the other hand, pressure increases, volume stays constant. So those are two examples. I'm going to just briefly introduce you to the other two, and we'll talk about these a little more in class. So the third one is going to be isothermal. I want to change the pressure and the volume of the gas but keep the temperature the same. How can I do that? Here's one way. Take the same setup as we had before. You could take this movable piston and a gas which is air type but the, the, the piston can expand and contract. And I put this whole cylinder of gas in like a water bath with a constant temperature. Okay, so the water bath has a constant temperature here. And so that means if I stay near equilibrium, the temperature of the gas is always going to be equal to the temperature of the water always, right? So the temperature of the gas will be equal to the temperature of the water as long as I keep the water temperature constant by putting it on a stove or whatever. Okay, so I keep that fixed. Then what I do is I take small masses, like grains of sand, imagine, and I drop them onto the top. So as I drop the masses onto the top, like I pat, imagine I put one grain of sand on, it compresses the cylinder a little bit, right? So then in your mind you're thinking, okay, that's going to heat up the gas, which it will a little bit, but then uh, it will come to equilibrium with the outside, right? So even if the gas is a little bit hotter for a second, if I wait, it will, it will eventually come to the same temperature as the water. And then I put another grain of sand, and I put another grain of sand. So I just put tiny masses on one at a time, very, very slowly. The, the volume decreases, the pressure increases, the temperature stays the same. That's an isothermal process. Okay? So at all times, and that's the key point, The gas is in equilibrium, or 
nearly in equilibrium with the water. And then I make these small changes and wait for it to equilibrate and make continue making small changes. How about adiabatic? Adiabatic, no heat is exchanged with the outside. So what's the difference? The difference is, take the same setup as we did for the isothermal process here, but instead of putting it in a water bath, which keeps it at the constant temperature, I wrap it in heat-proof insulation. So I wrap it in some very thick insulation so that it cannot exchange any heat with the outside. So see, I've got here, I have it wrapped insulation. And then I do the same thing. I take the gas, I put the grains of sand on one at a time, okay? Now when I put the grains of sand on, it's not coming to equi equilibrium with the outside. But the, the volume is going down because the masses are compressing it. Pressure's going up, but uh, the temperature is changing, right? The temperature is changing because it's not able to stay in equilibrium with the outside. So adiabatic process, heat proof insulation, prevents any heat from escaping the gas or from being added to the gas. Okay, so hopefully you can now visualize each of these processes. We've talked about four special processes, isochoric, isobaric, isothermal, adiabatic, I hope you can imagine an actual container of gas and what you're physically doing to that container in order to engage in one of these processes, isochoric, isobaric, isothermal, adiabatic. Now, I didn't draw the PV diagram for isothermal and adiabatic because for that I want to, that's a tricky point, and I want to do that in class. But I hope this gets you started with these concepts and we'll explore a little bit more during our lecture. So I would ask you now to navigate to D2L and go and take the concept quiz on this lecture to make sure that you've understood the main points here, and then we'll pick it up here in class. Thanks very much for your attention, and I hope you found this useful.